of pure understanding, pure understanding, the understanding of ourselves. This is the teachings of divine objectivity, that man is divine. Not one man, man is divine. And man means mind. So here we have the face of the suspect, the one we're all familiar with. This can be anybody, the Buddha, your mother, your child, yourself, the self mirror of self-reflection, the imprinting of your mother, the human being, the face. The face consists of the eyes, which are actually under here in the old diagram, and then the ears, which come here, the ears, the nose, it's the nose with the smell, there's the mouth, with the mouth, there's the hands, with the hands, so this is the face, the face we're all familiar with, the face of every man, the face we take for granted, the being a human being, the mystery, the silly mystery, the mystery, I say it's silly, because it's holy, man needs divine, now what I want to try and understand, the pure understanding, is how these senses emerge and how they function together. You know, the world in which we live, the self, understanding ourselves, the human nature, the understanding the self, understanding, 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 pure understanding understanding without any object. quickly run through them again. Here's the ninth dimension and that's the body. The eighth dimension is the fire, the sexual energy, you know, the energy, the heat, sensitivity, and then the seventh dimension is taste, which is shapes, volumes, shapes. The sixth is touch, the hands. See, the taste comes to the mouth. The heat goes to the sex. The body is in a certain posture. The hands do the touch. The eyes see the vision, the light. The ears hear the sound. In the fourth dimension, the intuition reads the faces in the second. The conscience sees the consequences, the move, movement, the course of action. And here we come to the focus, the imagination, the self, and the over self. But this is the key one to understand. This is the key one to understand. Because when we're born, we follow the attention of our parents. We follow the attention of our parents. So if our parents are looking at something, our eyes go to that. There's a, a pressure of an, an attention. So we focus on a point, 
and then there is pressure from those around us to focus on that point. So if we look up at, at the sky, we know we'll all end up looking up at the sky and wondering why he's looking up, but there's a pressure. Now this, to the scientists, is the difficult thing to understand. Because really, what you should understand is that spiritualism and science now have got the same view of the world. That the world is a holograph. We're looking at a holographic projection. I have other videos, and later on in the, this series, you know, it's a projection of the synesthetic superpixels. And this is the structure of those. And this is how the senses fit together. And now they come together on our faces in these different sense organs. But we start off with the focus. So we focus, and this is the beginning of any spiritual training, is training the gaze, focusing, becoming one-pointed. The focus, being able to focus, able to concentrate, and then from that concentration, we also feel the pressure of those around us. So if we're studying or under the control of a guru or teacher or you know whichever mentor or maybe authority figure is lording it over us, they can imprint a certain way of thinking, a control over our imagination, which controls the other dimensions. You know, I experience in these other dimensions. But this all comes here in the focus. You can focus on a certain image, a celebrity usually, you know, some hero, some past or present king or queen, as the be all and end all as a reality, but some sort of ego image is focused on that self and then that is then used to control the group, control the, 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 the realm through the monarch, control the individuals in their group, in a cult, in a certain group, with the magician who's actually, you know, intensely using his energy to instill a certain view of reality on his followers who he can then, you know, take to the cleaners. So, to understand this, you need to understand that there is a very powerful energy flowing through everything, and that is what we call the dark energy. This is why I say the spiritualists and the, you know, scientists, the cosmologists, the physicists agree. But this dark energy is prana. Dark energy is prana. The prana is dark energy, life energy. Prana is dark energy and it's the spirit. It's an ocean of dark energy. This is the Advaita, the transcendental the unborn, the dark energy. And that dark energy flows into us and we experience it as the self. And it flows out of us, back into the grid, into the energy system. And we get a response, so we get pressure from others. So we focus and then we get pressure from others. But actually the energy flows in and we experience the self and then it flows out. Now we come, as I said, this one is the key one, this is the focus, the energy in focus and the energy out 
in terms of what we're giving out our vibes, if you like. Now here we come on to the first dimension, because the point, the focus of attention is obviously going to move to another point. So all of these dimensions are actually all contained in this, in, uh, they're all points. They're all separate points, they're all points in mind. This is the divine mind. All of these points are points in mind. They're imaginary, but these relationships is what is how we see reality. That face, those senses, and the projected reality. So the first dimension we see a moving point. Now, the energy flowing in gives us a conscience, makes us see the consequences of the action. You know, the consequences of the action. If we take that action, then that will be the consequences. So we've got a conscience that guides us straight, a mechanism that guides us straight. It is not an imposition. It's a question of having to believe, having to believe and having to surrender to the flow. This is the teaching of this. And this is sense of movement is a function of pi. So the energy flows in as conscience and out as a perfectionist. See, the perfectionist is essential. So the conscience guides us and that makes us perfect, impeccable. We observe this as basically quickly that's back to the eyes. The eyes see the movement. So we're responding to movement, we're sensitive to movement, you know, to a change in the environment, any movement. And we can judge its speed and its course and its acceleration. We can see how far it's going to go and when it's going to get there. So we see, we see movement. And then in the second dimension, we see faces. Faces, this comes into our mother. We're reading faces. We become intuitive. We can become a mirror to others. We become empathic. We join, this is part of coming back to the focus. Remember, in the focus, we all come together. That pressure comes together. And we can see any movement, any movement that any one of us is moving in any direction. We can feel and sense that movement, that function in, in the energy. And we can see the responses of both others around us on their faces. You see how this is all tied into this focusing and this flow of energy. The intuition flows in, reading faces and the empath, being sympathetic, being assist, able to assist being cooperative, being responsive, all of these come from the, from the face and from the relationship, and all of these happen there, within the spirit, within the, 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 the love, the, the self. We all come together, follow movement, see faces, and this is when we come to Here we have E, the exponential, it's got the image on the surface, you know, like the image on the face, the frown or the smile is always fleeting. This is a function of E, the exponential, everything, real beauty fades and dies, the, everything is fleeting, positive and negative, and it, it oscillates, the smile, the frown, the acceptance, rejection, all of these, and, and millions of faces too. This is what we see in the vision. And there we have five, with the, with the desire, the need to see harmony, to see function, to see the, the right, smiling faces and the harmonious movement. So we're seeing five, which is a pentacle in polygon harmonics. So we're seeing a pentacle, we're seeing harmony. God saw that it was good. We want to see everything good and harmonious and integrated. And so we see this in relationship as a child, we see them mother in that face and the father in that movement in that coming and going and we want to see harmony so everything comes from <coughs> these inner relationships you 
difference in the relationships. So these are our responses in the environment we live in. The, the, the other um, seven, this one, is the nose, so the nose smells. This is the third dimension, this is space. So we identify a space by its smell. We identify a home by a smell. We identify granny's place by a smell. We identify the kitchen by the smell, the paint shop by the smell, the wood workshop, the garage, everything from the smell. We identify the space. And this is basically in water. We, like, we want to smell the water and make sure the water doesn't, doesn't smell of anything. Or if it's our home water, the water from where we live, we can taste without coming, coming down to the lower level. So we, we smell, and we can smell the, the hormones, the pheromones of those around us. So we smell fear and discomfort and, you know, everything. We can smell people's state. And so we've become di diplomatic in the home. This is about being in the home. It's an old sign. This is the third dimension, the water. So we smell, and from that smell we, we, we react in a diplomatic way in the home to deal with the situation. <coughs> and then we come on to the ears. <coughs> the ears hear the sound, so the sound comes in. And then the sound comes out, the sound of our voice. whether we're official, bullying, hectoring, ranting, raving, the sound of our voice, whether we're singing, chanting, feeling, emoting, it all comes out in the sound of our voice. It's in the fourth dimension. Now in the fifth dimension, we have the light coming in and then the observer. So the, so the energy flowing in to this center is identified as light and the self that's watching it is identified as the observer. This is the ego, the driver. Can't get rid of it. Can't do without it. Not very important. But the ego is part of the divine is the divine self, the divine incarnation, the Narayan. This is the Atman. Then we come to the sixth dimension, dimension of wood, which is the dimension of vegetable life, you know, gardening and everything. And this has to do with the touch. So we, it's basically like water pressure, really. There's water, get a surface tension here, get <coughs> a cell, and that surface tension is then the touch. <coughs> <coughs> so you get a touch, then you get a gentleman. You get a gardener, you get sensitive of touch with something germinating. So you get the idea of planting seeds, of taking decisions, of planning, you know, planning. This is the planning department and the decision. You touch and you make a de decision. Do you like the feel of that? Do you like the feel of this? The touch. Oh, you see what I mean? Even the action, touch. See, this is wood. Wood means is tree or truth in Sanskrit and, and Gaelic. Teru in Gaelic. Deru in Sanskrit. It's the same word, tree and truth. So touch wood means that's the truth. It's touching wood, the feeling, the common feeling, the actual sensation of touching is what wood is, you know, woody. This is the pressure. Hence the P there. This is the seventh dimension. This is the mouth. See, there we've got the hands. Uh, emphasizes the hands on the on the groin. This is the mouth.
So the mouth, we put things to our mouth and taste it. And that tasting is its salts, its salt content, you know, the chemistry of it. And this, so this is stone. And the thinker, so it's almost like imagining, you know, Rodin's the thinker. Where's the stone? There's the crystal. There's the rock salt. There's the structure, the molecules, the shapes of those things. This is the area of shape. That seven is a zigzag. The corners on things, the molecular structure. The crystal structure, crystals. And so think about those different shapes, those platonic forms, those crystal structures, those intermeshing, you know, chemical structures of new materials. And, and this is the basis of this. This is the shapes, the taste. Like in design, what shapes do you like? You know, what is your design favorite? This is taste. And it's the thinker, is this thinking about different tastes. come on to the sex. This is both male and female. So there's a fire comes in and the hunter goes out hunting like a tomcat. That's the temperature. See that's the volume. Remember these things. P, B, upper T is a constant. So this is the sex center being male or female. According to the you know, the teachings, the, the sex just depends on, on the body. It is nothing to do with the spirit, it is both male and female. Now here the, we have the sexual center. Now the thing with sex it is, like the trouble in Ireland is probably had it right, they had a period when you were allowed to be promiscuous in your teenage years, but the idea was you had to be, find a partner <coughs> you had to find a partner you were compatible with sexually and then you were expected to stay together so sex is about bonding of a relationship now the relationship comes in here in the focus in sharing that inner relationship Somebody you know, somebody you can see a future with, somebody you know is a real person in a real situation, in a real future. Not, you know, some fancy, you know, holiday romance, some fleeting sexual you know, infatuation, some sexual chemistry. Because that's what that, what's happening now, obviously, is there's an addiction to sexual well, you know, to, uh, you know, sexual liaisons without a relationship. And so that this leads to misery, because there's no enduring in a relationship. You know, the energies don't work, the energy doesn't flow. <coughs> <coughs> so there's the fire, and there's the hunter, and there's the trouble. The B fox says this is about the birds and the bees, where it all belongs and where it all went wrong. Because now, because people don't know, they should be forming these steady relationships in their, you know, in their late teens. And then that's why you have all these single bars and dating sites and everything, where everyone's perpetually looking, actually just for a sexual relationship. But with a faint, vain hope of some relationship emerging based on the sexual nature, which is nonsense, it should be the other way around. So sex within an established relationship, not necessarily a friend, but somebody you know, you know somebody you know that you get on with, you can live with, you can eat with, and wake up with, and walk down the street with, someone you can be with. And there we have the ninth dimension, which is the body. This physical body, and the body is in a certain position, and that leads to a certain action. So we have an awareness of posture, an awareness of position, and from that postural position, 
we, we can read if you like the body language, the threat of the kata or, or the asana, or the lack of threat in an asana. Um, with, with, like with Raja already, I can, you can see from this posture of his body what he's projecting as an actor, probably the greatest actor we've ever had. There's the actor, the energy that creates this body, and from that body becomes this actor. Mm -hmm.